You might think you're ready to brave the unknown, to test your mettle against the raw power of nature. And while the spirit of adventure is something I admire, there's a fine line between bravery and recklessness. Trust me, I've learned that the hard way, pushing my limits in some of the most unforgiving corners of the globe. This video isn't about discouraging your adventurous spirit, but about channeling it wisely. We're diving deep into the top five places you should think twice about tackling solo. These are environments where backup isn't a call away, where self-reliance means everything, and where even the smallest mistake can have dire consequences. So buckle up, grab your survival kit, you won't need it for this journey, but it's always good to be prepared. And let's navigate the wild side of solo travel together. Remember, sometimes the bravest decision is knowing when to have a partner by your side. The allure of the wilderness is undeniable. The vast, untouched landscapes, the symphony of nature's orchestra, the feeling of being utterly alone under a sky bursting with stars. It's intoxicating, a siren song for the adventurous soul. But it's in these remote corners of the world, where civilization feels a million miles away, that solo travel can turn treacherous faster than a flash flood in a canyon. Imagine this, you've been trekking through dense rainforest for days, the humid air thick with the scent of damp earth and exotic blooms. You're navigating by the sun, your compass your only guide. Then disaster strikes. You lose your footing on a muddy trail, your ankle twisting beneath you. The searing pain is immediate, crippling. You're miles from the nearest settlement, your satellite phone out of range. This isn't some far-fetched scenario, folks. It's the harsh reality of venturing solo into the wild. Out here, help isn't a phone call away. It's a matter of self-reliance, of having the skills and the mental fortitude to survive until you can reach safety or until rescue, if it comes at all. The wilderness doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care if you're a seasoned survivalist or a weekend warrior. It throws curveballs, sudden storms, flash floods, encounters with dangerous wildlife that can quickly escalate a challenging situation into a life or death struggle. And let's not forget the psychological impact of isolation. Out there, surrounded by the immensity of nature, it's easy for fear and doubt to creep in. The silence, once peaceful, can become deafening, amplifying every snap of a twig, every rustle of leaves. It's a test of your mental resilience, of your ability to stay calm and focused when every instinct is screaming at you to panic. That's not to say you should shy away from exploring the remote corners of our planet, far from it. But what I am saying is this. Think twice before you venture out alone. A partner, someone to share the load, to offer a helping hand when you need it most, can be the difference between a thrilling adventure and a fight for survival. There's a certain allure to places steeped in history, regions where the echoes of the past still resonate through ancient ruins and whispered tales. But some of these places, scarred by conflict and political unrest, are best admired from a distance, especially when you're flying solo. Venturing into a conflict zone is like stepping onto a live minefield. The ground is constantly shifting, the danger invisible, unpredictable. What might seem like a stable situation can erupt into chaos in the blink of an eye. One minute you're exploring a bustling marketplace, the next you're caught in the crossfire, the air thick with the smell of cordite and fear. It's not just the threat of violence that makes these regions so perilous for solo travelers. It's the lack of reliable infrastructure, the breakdown of law and order, the constant risk of being caught in the crosshairs of a conflict you don't fully understand. Navigating these complexities requires local knowledge, an understanding of the nuances of the situation, and an awareness of the cultural sensitivities that can mean the difference between a safe passage and a dangerous confrontation. And then there's the psychological toll, the constant tension, the ever-present threat of danger can wear down even the most seasoned traveler. It's a heavy burden to carry alone, especially when you're navigating unfamiliar territory. If you're drawn to these regions, and I understand the pull, believe me, consider joining a guided tour or traveling with a reputable organization. They can provide a level of security and local expertise that's invaluable in such volatile environments. Remember, adventure shouldn't come at the cost of your safety. Cities pulsating with life, a melting pot of cultures, a kaleidoscope of sights and sounds, they beckon with promises of adventure, of experiencing the raw energy of urban jungles. But some cities, plagued by high crime rates, can quickly turn a dream trip into a nightmare, especially for the solo traveler who stands out from the crowd. Imagine this, you're lost in a maze of unfamiliar streets, 
the sun setting, casting long shadows that dance with your unease. You clutch your bag tighter, your senses on high alert. Every passerby seems like a potential threat, every dark alley a stage for trouble. This isn't about demonizing entire cities or their residents, it's about acknowledging the realities of crime and the vulnerability of being alone in an environment where you're an easy target. Pickpockets, scammers, those looking to exploit tourists, they see a solo traveler weighed down by bags distracted by their surroundings, and they see an opportunity. And, it's not just petty theft you need to worry about. Violent crime from muggings to assaults can turn a dream trip into a living nightmare. And if something does happen, if you find yourself in trouble, who will be there to help? Who will have your back? Now, I'm not saying you should avoid cities altogether. Cities are incredible places, full of life and culture. But if you're set on exploring a city with a reputation for crime, especially solo, be smart. Do your research. Understand the high-risk areas and avoid them, especially at night. Don't flash your cash or expensive jewelry. Blend in as much as possible. And most importantly, trust your gut. If a situation feels off, it probably is. Ah, islands. The word itself conjures up images of pristine beaches, swaying palm trees, crystal clear waters teeming with life. It's the ultimate escape, a chance to disconnect from the world and reconnect with nature. But what happens when that idyllic isolation turns into a desperate struggle for survival? Imagine this. You finally reached that secluded cove, miles from the nearest inhabited island. You've been dreaming of this moment, of having this slice of paradise all to yourself, you dive into the turquoise water, the sun warm on your skin, but as you swim back to shore, a current catches you off guard, pulling you further and further away from the beach. You try to fight it, but your muscles are tiring, the shore becoming a distant speck. Panic sets in. You're alone, miles from help, the vastness of the ocean stretching out before you. This is the reality of venturing solo to isolated islands. It's a gamble, a test of your self-reliance pushed to the extreme. Limited resources, unpredictable weather, the potential for natural disasters. These are just some of the challenges you face when you're stranded on an island with no one to rely on but yourself. And then there's the psychological impact of isolation. The silence, broken only by the crashing waves and the cries of seabirds, can be deafening. The feeling of being utterly alone, cut off from civilization, can chip away at your resolve, amplifying every fear, every doubt. So, before you set sail for that remote island paradise, Ask yourself, are you prepared to face the challenges, the isolation, the potential dangers, alone? Because out there on the edge of the map, self-reliance is more than just a survival skill, it's a matter of life and death. The world is full of extremes, places where nature pushes the boundaries of what we consider habitable. Towering mountains piercing the clouds, scorching deserts stretching as far as the eye can see, icy wastelands ruled by biting winds and unforgiving cold. These environments they call to a certain breed of adventurer, those who crave the ultimate test of human endurance. But they're also places where solo travel can quickly turn deadly. Imagine this, you're battling your way through a blinding blizzard, the wind screaming like a banshee, the temperature plummeting to bone-chilling lows, your vision is blurred, your fingers numb, your body struggling to stay warm. You know you need to find shelter, and fast. But the landscape is a featureless, white expanse, the trail long gone. This isn't some adventure movie, folks. This is the reality of extreme environments. They're unforgiving, unpredictable, and utterly indifferent to your survival. One wrong step, one miscalculation, one moment of weakness, and you can find yourself fighting for your life. In these environments, Self-reliance is paramount. You need the skills, the knowledge, and the mental fortitude to withstand the elements, to navigate treacherous terrain, to deal with unexpected challenges. And even then, sometimes it's not enough. And let's not forget the psychological toll, the isolation, the constant battle against the elements, the knowledge that help is days, if not weeks away, can push even the strongest mind to its breaking point. So if you're drawn to the extremes, and I get it, the allure is undeniable. Ask yourself, are you truly prepared? Because out there, on the edge of human endurance, you're not just facing nature's wrath, you're facing your own limits. There you have it, folks. The top five places where I'd think twice about venturing solo. Remember, adventure shouldn't be a death wish. It's about pushing your boundaries, testing your limits, but doing so with a healthy dose of respect for the power of nature and the unpredictable nature of our world. I've stared danger in the face countless times and I can tell you from experience, 
There's no shame in prioritizing safety. Having a partner by your side, someone to share the load, to offer support when the going gets tough, can make all the difference. It's not about being fearless, but about being smart, prepared, and knowing when to call for backup. So, keep exploring, keep seeking adventure, but do it wisely. Because the greatest reward of any expedition is returning home safe, ready for the next challenge.